Thank you and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mag Gamer. If you know me, 2001, I started writing articles after I played Metal Gear Solid 2. It really inspired me. That said, I did retire from that, but with this new game, Kojima is sparking the flames to return. But I will not get deep into the theories. We're going to break this trailer down. We just saw it at the Game Awards, and it is a long trailer. If you want to watch it, go ahead and Google it. I will be playing this thing on slow motion just to give you some deeper looks into the game. Now, I'm going to pause it right in this section here for one 60 seconds to break something down. A lot of people don't listen to Kojima's interviews and don't understand what he's trying to do with this game. And they want to create their theories and concepts. Now, the facts are the facts. This is an action game. It's going to be an open world game. Maybe open environment, depending on how Kojima plays it. I'm pretty sure it's going to be open world. He said that. Now, things are in development, so never take any word from a developer 100% cemented but with Kojima you can trust he will deliver what he's trying to do is create a new genre but just creating new mechanics that we will be intrigued by and a lot of it has to do with the stick and rope as well as life and death and the connections that they involve now where where exactly and how does that all work we can check out trailers and make our theories and break down what we feel is or isn't. But I'm not going to spend time diving into mostly theories. I want to I want to talk about the core of what he's trying to say. So the evolution of man. Homo sapiens. Then the evolution is homo ludens. Ludens is play. So as man evolves. We learn to live, survive, thrive. Then when we get to a better place, we learn to play, entertain ourselves, whether it's music, movies, or games, or whatever. And that's the theme of this game, one of the core themes that people have to really pay attention to. Secondly, you want to pay attention to sticks and ropes. Sticks and ropes is the other side of it. On a mechanical aspect as well as concepts and themes mechanically I believe this game will have functions where the player has something uh, rope like as we have seen in all of these trailers that connect them to the enemies or allies in different ways to enhance their abilities or take away someone else's abilities or in that fashion, I believe that this game will feature that type of mechanic that really opens up the table in a different way that a lot of games haven't explored yet. And that's something that is exciting. And then when it comes to life and death, I believe that there will be a mechanic within it. Um, there was a, a long time ago, well, not that long ago, that Kojima talked about how typically every game you die and you start over. But with Death Stranding, I believe he's going to do something very innovative and different there. Of course, I'm not trying to feed you guys with my personal theories. We'll be here all night. Let's get into the trailer. So just as you hold down, down and if you watch all three trailers, we're going to start paying attention here. And I'm going to assume you've seen the rest. This is a Hideo Kojima game. As you see, traditionally, we see the crabs throughout this important important part of the game this is key to kind of give you the world the universe what is happening death stranding as you see whales get strand themselves either out of danger or they're dying and they throw themselves out of the water because they don't want to get uh, for whatever reason scientists haven't really pinpointed from what I know that said we're watching this just like every opening it starts off with that this time around <laughs> Norman Reedus has clothing. It's the first time he wears clothes. 
He is not a nudist. We can confirm. Now, with this trailer here, and what you're seeing here, I'm going to set the, the, the whole situation in motion in just a second here. But Norma Reedus is a little special compared to what I'm about to tell you is happening in this game. Uh, of course, he's the main character is what they've said. But he's also wearing different clothing than the guys that we're going to see in a minute. And what they're doing in this atmosphere and in this environment, as you see him waking up with that awesome piece that connects to a tape recorder sort of kind of like a iDroid if you know what don't know what that is google it um he's waking up and trying to figure it all out his buddies they are actually corpse disposal team 6 we'll see that in one of their patches in a little while so they're there to dispose of corpse pretty basic right he on the other hand doesn't wear the same outfit and he's from Porter now that's a very key part part that you want to pay attention to later on as we go forward as we see here the vehicle is crashed and then there's some survivors or is there survivors out there and it gets interesting from here because like I said this game is about Death Stranding, right? But what is Death Stranding? What does it really mean? Is it really just Death Stranding like the whales that, that jump on a beach and die? Or is it the opposite of what Kojima said? Life and connections of the lives. And I think that's going to be the key. Is understanding Death Stranding's meaning is more about life connections. That is what the, the, the ultimate meaning means when you look, when you look at death being life. And stranding being connections. All right, stop right here. Let's take a quick pause. We see the porter on his name. These other guys don't wear that. They're bridge. They're a part of bridge. What I want you to pay attention to here is he has a dream catcher in his backpack down below hanging. And if you don't know what a dream catcher is, Google it. I'm not going to spend hours breaking it all down. But this can be, oh, am I hallucinating? Is this a dream? No. This is a, a alternate reality possibility, but maybe he wears that for protection, superstitious, maybe a backstory, his child gave it to him, or or something deeper uh, that it helps protect in a superstitious way, as Kojima likes doing taboo subjects and getting deeper into certain things. So, uh, we see that, we see the porter, we see... This big backpack thing, like what is that, right? We we'll, we'll talk about that. Is he a hiker? What is he carrying in the, what is in that backside? But as you can see, the, the dream catcher is there. And it is very important, I believe. It, it's showcased, and there's certain things that happen later on. And as you see here, this is supposed to be a corpse. There, He's, he's coming down, checking it out, and seeing what's this corpse all about, right? But it is very unique and very different the way they set this up. They have the gold on the person's face and tied them down. It's just very odd. And you can theorize with that if you want. But uh, overall, this part here is really awesome. I would say um, it should be before... Because there's there's three trailers, and this is before the other two, is my opinion. But we'll get into that in a lay, later time. Now we're going to look at the guys that are the corpse disposal team. Six. Remember that. Six is a key word. So, corpse disposal team. And these guys right here are wearing orange, and they work for brick. I mean, bridges. And we won't even get into bridges if you watch the other trailer, other breakdowns. As you can see there, it says it right on their sleeves, on their patches. Corpse. Disposal Team 6. This guy's stuck in the car and his friend's trying to help him, right? But you want to pay attention to their arms. They both have what uh, Norman Reedus had on his arm, which is kind of uh, cuffs, if you want to call it that. And this great device here, very futuristic, as Kojima is well known to have these really exotic 
and eccentric gadgets throughout his games. Awesome stuff. But as you see, if you look carefully on their arms, I paid attention to that and saw the cuffs on their hand. You can't see the other side of the cuff hanging. But, for example, the guy who's not in distress, he has a blue cuff. I'm going to call them cuffs, guys. While the guy that's injured went from, you can see as his body changes, he's looking like he's getting old or he's, he's sucking the life out of him. He's hurt pretty bad. But you can see on his cuff is actually red. And this is danger. And you don't want to get to that stage. And there's a reason and purpose for those cuffs. And it's very important to the narrative. And you want to pay attention to that as we go forward. Because you'll see something that really sets the purpose behind the cuffs. And, and showcases what's death and life really about. And there's going to be a lot of theories We'll get into that another day, but not today. So you see his cuff is blue. He's covering his mouth because Norman Reedus tells him not to speak. Be quiet. You see he has a red cuff, the injured fella, while this gentleman has the blue. And this shows about health. If I'm blue, I'm healthy, I'm fine. If I'm red, I'm in danger, I'm hurt. And right now they heard a noise. They're scared for their lives. Norman Reedus told him, don't breathe. So they're holding their breaths, hoping that whatever's out there does not grab a hold of them, capture them, or do what it does. So now the question here is, what are these things? We've seen the, the handprints in the three trailers, and we wonder, what it, is this? What is this third dimension, fifth dimension? What, what are these things? And how do they exist what type of alternative universe are we in? Are we in another planet? So, of course, you see Luden rocking the spaceship. So, there's possibilities they went to other planets to explore. And this is all set in alternate universe. In a whole new galaxy, possibly. Um, or are they invading the Earth? As you see, these guys right here are terrified of this thing. But if they hold their breath, the thing is walking away. And it has hands, and people want to call it a monkey, but I I don't consider that. As you can see later on, that they have human-like hands, and they have the shape of humans, but of course there are some very weird creatures. So that is the, the vehicle for the bridges, and uh, it's very interesting how this all plays out. Because now we know that there's a way to stay alive. Don't breathe. So that's a key factor that you want to pay attention to as this progresses as you go forward in the game itself. So life and death. So if I fake like I'm dead by not breathing, I stay alive. Okay, and this guy right here confirming he's fine. He survived. It is an interesting part, again, life and death, as death stranding doesn't mean death. It's about life. That's my opinion, and I know this because of Kojima's concepts and themes. So, that said, we see a corpse here. The question is, was the corpse dead or alive? Because there are some actions that it starts to do that make us question what is really going on. And the corpse gets really 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 intriguing and opens the door to a new world for us in this game that we haven't seen yet as we see Norman Reedus with amazing graphics here but again he's nothing like these other guys he is definitely not a corpse disposal team six member he's his own entity he has Porter all over his uniform wearing gray instead of orange and as you see here the corpse is starting to move now is this the creatures that are causing this effect and they're extracting whatever materials as you see there as they continue to bring him down into the liquid 
Now this is where the theories can get really serious. I'm not going to dive into the theories too heavily. I just want to get factual breakdowns. So as you see this glow, maybe Norman put that on him as a way to confirm when he gets taken. And they gave that body away. And not gave it away, but after the accident, they got caught and they lost it. So that right there is a bunch of theories on is this the form of these creatures from the other dimension taking lives or restoring them? And how does that work in the gameplay aspect is the key that I want to know. As you see here, this figure floating, human-like figure floating in the air. And now the liquid again starts to form with the palms all over again very intriguing concept here where in another dimension but what's interesting here is he looks like either he's bleeding or the creature is leaking out and it is so interesting with the next dimension as you see the lava come up a bit he holds his breath and it stops and once again, this is death or life. And the metaphor is a mirror. If I die, do I really die? Do I go to this dimension and become one of these creatures? Or are we invading people's territories? Are we, you know, these are so many different ways to look at what is happening. Are they in outer space somewhere invading these poor creatures? <laughs> I say that and they're probably the worst enemies but that concept is worse important as you see here this guy's screaming for his life he's hurting and it's too late now he cannot save his member and what's really key to watch here is he has the tank that's connected to that yellow patch on his side there and that is where the baby is. And the baby's so important to this. And Kojima's doing a really amazing job talking about, uh, metaphorically speaking, about video games and his love and etc. But now we're going to see this guy struggling. His handcuff is red. He's in danger and he's making noises. And now they're taking him away. And again, this is where it gets even more intriguing as you see his member feeling really bad. And knowing he has to do something about it, he pulls out his gun. And the reason for this, again, is where we speculate the gameplay. These creatures want him alive. And they're going to take him anyways. But if they take him alive, then it's a serious issue that they can use him for worse to power themselves up or to do something that uh, can endanger the humans. As we go, we see here these hands where, once again, Death Stranding is the connection, uh, life's connections of trying to absorb in this game is going to be a lot of absorbing, in my opinion. Uh, there will be guns and weapons, but the absorbing aspect is such a key component, something different, that uh, mechanic that I think Kojima is going to be putting into it. And these creatures are doing it in their own way, so I think we're going to have that ability as you see him take out his member and keep looking at his right arm with the cuff and understand that he's healthy and doing fine right now for the moment after he killed his friend not allowing them to take him and a smart move there like I said this is a absorbing type of game where you have the rope pulling you in the rope connecting you guys to absorb your power to absorb your life force and to maybe create a whole new dimension of, of something even more powerful. So for me, um, the concept is simple. It's uh, really awesome. But here we go. Now, i got to take a pause. i got to take a pause. So here, this is to me my favorite part of the trailer because I already got a feeling I know who this is and I know where this is going. And I'm a little upset because I have something I'm working on that has a figure in that 
regard, but not exactly the same. My guy actually is a little more designed, uh, stylish, let's say. I love this guy here, but mine's is mysterious but stylish. But uh, this mysterious figure pops up telling you to be quiet again and then pointing towards the opposite way that you're looking behind you and things get really really interesting and he looks like he's one of them if you really really pay attention to what they're wearing and that machine that they have so now that machine's going to be your companion it's the light and it's probably going to be how you interact with things and it's probably going to be how you absorb it's going to be your rope in the game to a certain extent so it's very key and important to understand that but the question is is he good or bad right I think if he's warning you like he does here and he points forward just like uh, Mr. Mads does he's trying to help you can you can assume this and uh, what's complicated about it is we don't know the story and narrative and what's really happening and how many different factions or issues what is really going on but now we get to see the legendary baby and again this is to me the metaphor uh, I like taking the symbolism from Kikojima games and this is a beautiful metaphor with the baby and video games and his love and passion for gaming and this project meaning the world to me the most precious project that he could think of and it was his first project with his own studio and, and it's his baby so that's really cool and I really tribute that baby it's going to be key uh, gameplay aspects as we see the world drowning what what's interesting for me is he's shooting and there's these floating creatures that he's trying to hit but I mean if you know you can't have no power over them don't panic but he did and now it might cost him his life as we go forward but as you can see remember his cuff his cuff is blue right now folks look at his right hand there's a cuff on it and it is blue and it's perfectly fine but he shot he caught their attention they're grabbing him and what's interesting what happens next again Death Stranding will you allow yourself to be that whale throwing yourself at the beach out of a desperate measure and kill yourself basically or will you fight the odds as we see Norman here somehow being special and being chosen being smart and not panicking the way his uh, buddy over there did and he's trying to kill himself as you see right here this is very very crucial when he tried to kill himself they stopped him from doing so because they want him they want to utilize him but he's too late they captured him but it's not over because he realizes he needs to do something and this is where again the death stranding part is he doesn't want to be taken alive he really doesn't and this is a key component in the game as you see the other character was killed before they could take him so right now he's going for his gun trying to do the same thing take himself out like he tried as you see his right hand has the blue icon and I want you to pay close attention while this next scene happens it's very crucial and now what we wonder here what is going on with this world how could the water stay down but everything else start floating into the sky multiple dimensions what is really happening in this universe look at this from a blue cuff on his right hand as he stabs himself you're gonna see that blue cuff turn colors from blue to yellow to orange he's trying to kill himself off it's almost red there he basically is trying to stop them from taking him as he doesn't want them to what to 
live through their connection of life aka death stranding folks uh, this isn't a theory or anything this is what Kojima uh, brought up about the game in multiple interviews and then what more symbolizing life than a child a baby what symbolized life more folks and this is right here Norman Reedus instead of grabbing the, the raw baby on the first trailer he has the baby in this container tank and now this is where again the, the really interesting parts of the dimensions and what universe are we in are we on earth and the aliens invaded or is this a whole new planet that they've uh, explored and I think that's better than nothing is uh, exploring different planets and it's so odd because Norman's the only thing in that whole area that is not floating and is it because he has the baby or is he a chosen one and what's really key about this creature here it's that it's huge and it's kinda like human shaped but this thing in the center looks like an umbilical cord attached to its body in the stomach area and it goes down into the ground and I'll showcase it when the chance comes to show you exactly that but as you see their arms are attached to many different things with the death stranding again meaning life connections these life connections with these strings or umbilical cords or whatever you want to label it as very very interesting this creature is carrying the body of the human up to itself so it can devour it now the question is was the human alive he's still trying to stab himself to death but uh, he's getting captured and gets sucked in and absorbed by this creature and this is where you want to take a quick second as I'll uh, showcase what this creature does as you see that umbilical cord is down to the earth attached to it and once it absorbs a human it explodes or does it now this is where the trickery happens with Kojima's editing what happens next possibly isn't exactly directly leading up to this next scene everything that happens next might just be later on or before these events and I personally think this next chapter that we're gonna see is after the first trailer where Norman Reedus was now laying down with the baby wakes up and ends up in the water why because if you check his body he has handprints all over him unless this becomes a recurring factor in the game those handprints were there because of that trailer the first one if you want to google that and this is just a showcase of him in water but now him going into this water showcase that he went to another dimension and basically tells us that connection that Kojima is talking about with life and death and um, sticks and ropes how that is connecting them to a new place and death stranding once again the death part is really about life and the stranding is about connections strands so we're seeing Norman Reedus in another dimension at this time and a different part of the game and we can't tell you which is first or second we can assume and I can get into theories and all of that good stuff at another time but overall you're seeing Norman Reedus after this and what is he looking at and what is he focused on what is happening in this world we still have these ropes connecting the earths all the different planets together in some way shape or form and down below where he's at it's supposedly the water right and it looks like general land if you look carefully at the top of the screen here one of those beams are floating up above that into as he just made it in the center there he makes it up and that's when the creature comes by to eat or devour or whatever it does now this creature looks like an octopus with all the hands and then it looks like a mermaid at the tail end there a very weird and creepy creature to say the least 
But that's not what I'm concerned. I'm concerned about the second dimension. How could it float up above the water is what it looked like. It was above the water floating just like it did um, earlier where things were floating. So the trickery on what Kojima is doing, to be honest with you guys, is, is pretty powerful. He's messing with our heads, but some of this game will be factual. And what I mean is a lot of it isn't what it seems. And it's going to be a lot simpler and not so complicated. A lot of people want to complicate this, but this is going to be a purely basic game in many regards. Um, he's really smart at creating intriguing things to enlighten people's minds and give them, you know, inspiration on ideas. But you got to understand. So when I say that, this is the water area. Were they underground and underwater through the whole beginning part of what we just saw? Or is there something different there? You know, so here we go again with the Dreamcatcher. Check it out. A powerful, powerful part of the game. Very symbolic of many things. But I really love it. And I can get into that by itself and turn a whole new video. And he, now you see him. He's connected right now. He's connected to the other world. Is this another Norman Reedus within the game? Are we going to have multiple Norman Reeduses? Are we all connected to other players? As Kojima says, he's going to try to connect players to each other and connect life and death in different ways. As we see here, maybe he died, right? Maybe they caught him. And now he's in a new dimension, a new universe, a new him in some way, shape, or form, right? These are theories that you want to get into later. But as you see, he's pregnant, folks. <laughs> Sorry to say it. But, okay, cool. You're awesome, baby. But what I really love about this baby is the thumbs up. Yay. Babies do that a lot, actually. So it's a common thing. But this is just gross. Just coming out of a person's insides. But it's an amazing, amazing part here. Breaking down the different dimensions as now he's back on Earth. So how does this all connect? Does the baby connect us to different worlds? Right now he's going to be spewing out these creatures who devoured him so my my concept about what Kojima's concept is when you die you're not really dead you go into this other dimensions as he did multiple times and right now he's reviving himself from one and he's going to be spewing out some alien fluids let's say and he's back into his normal form back into somewhat of the grounds of the earth maybe right after the explosion that we saw earlier or maybe not but as you can see here these small creatures and what's funny about these creatures is the fact that Kojima's really playing with us about gravity and what is reality and what is uh, made up and what is really in this trailer I try to tell people some of this won't be here maybe the ropes won't be there maybe you know, the gravity aspect of water, underwater, you know, what is underwater, what isn't. These things are all questionable with the way Kojima presents things for fun. Now, what's really cool here is you can see Mr. Luden himself hanging from this baby. I didn't want to point it out until right now. He's hanging from the baby, a small little cute Luden. I think that was an awesome extra feature to have. I thought it was fun. So what was weird is that a Dreamcatcher was floating in the air, but he still has one. So maybe that was somebody else's Dreamcatcher. And this is a traditional or maybe actually more than just a uh, superstitious purpose. Who knows? But these things are getting really interesting because so many different dimensions and, and so many different parts of life and death being presented to us in this game in a new way. That I think the gameplay, hopefully, uh, this weekend, if I'm wrong, then we'll probably see something again for E3. As uh, it'll be a long wait. But he, he's at the point now where he can start showing some type of gameplay uh, by next year. So I expect that. But as you see him crying, you got to wonder what is really going on. What type of torment is he suffering through? As we see the five guys 
post it up. Don't forget if these guys, you know, are key components for every trailer. And then you look down below, it looks like a nuke smashed into the ground. And maybe that was where the creature was. And everything is destroyed. And it's, it's again, there's things that are missing and things that shouldn't be there that he'll probably delete from the actual game. And it'll be a very simple, simplistic game um, when it comes to certain parts. So for me, I just don't want people to get the wrong concept of this game. Of course, everybody got their crazy theories. And I have my own. But I, everything I've been talking about is very clear. I'm not doing any theories. I'm doing more base off of what Kojima says and then observing and trying to give you guys some type of breakdown on it a little bit. I'm going to replay this video on normal while I do my wrap up. And the wrap up is going to be the core essence of what you should expect from this game, <clears throat> in my opinion. As we see, there's so much symbolic nature here uh, from Kojima's normal style and the Psycho Mantis aspect, which is a powerful being. And then you think about psychology. We're going to rewind this and I'm going to go ahead and put it on normal. So. <clears throat> The psychology of Death Stranding, Stranding supposedly meaning in psychology connecting, connections, rather than it meaning stranding like you're stranded. So that's what's really powerful about this game. And Death Stranding, the meaning and purpose behind it is a whole different thing. And the gameplay, as he said before, is going to be a new genre. He's going to try to make new mechanics. He always does new mechanics, unlike other games. But what I think this time is going to be somewhat of a genre breaker, different elements that can really be key to the components that we've seen throughout these trailers. And apologies for that buff. I got this on 4K right now. So this is a trailer on normal, and we're watching him waking up. What is going on? And these dimensions, again, are all broken down in different fashions right now he's in a normal earth-like environment maybe a different planet he's sitting there with a team of corpse disposal team six six remember six um, and they got this corpse here with gold on his face no idea what that's about and they crashed and this guy stuck as you can read the corpse disposal team six right on their patches and the other guys like oh no they're coming here we are so this is one of those things where this is a good setting good breakdown of what is going on in the game and how to survive and how deep into the game is this I would think this is early on and I think you get stranded <coughs> no pun intended uh, you get stranded right after this, possibly, and it's like, oh man. And 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 I'm really intrigued by the dimensions and the death stranding part is is really intriguing because how do I get to that next dimension? Do I have to die, or you know what do these dimensions provide for us? And how, does that clone me? Do I stay on this earth? If I go to the next dimension or, the, you know, these are questions and, and things as a creator you can play with. And I think it'll be interesting as these guys kill themselves before they get captured. They do not want to get captured by these creatures alive. So I thought that was intriguing. And uh, we'll see what happens. This right here alone is like, are they sacrificing this guy? Did they bring out that body to sacrifice it or to experiment on these creatures? What is really going on? And uh, it's interesting, uh, to say the least. And the way this is presented, I believe they've done an amazing job so far. And I think the gameplay will settle us down 
and all this madness will be like, oh, it feels normal because Kojima's not silly. He knows he doesn't want to change the gameplay into something outlandish. His his creative cutscenes and his innovations for with gameplay are always top of the line, but he always has a core gameplay that is fun, fluid, and intriguing for everybody. So um, we're looking at that amazing Death Stranding trailer. I did not want to get into theories. I did make this video pretty long, but I do want it in slow motion. I could have broke most of this down in a, in a faster method. But I appreciate you guys coming out right here. Is this the hero trying to save them? And these are really cool aspects of this game that I'm so excited for. And I know Kojima's going to give us nothing but the best. And... I would like to hear what you guys got to say. I would like to hear everybody's points of views. Just because I retired doesn't mean I can't have fun and and go back and forth. And I gave you guys hints online about my thoughts. And I'll continue to do so because I feel it's important for us to just engage in these things. And these are what makes games awesome. Specifically Kojima games. He always has something food for thought. And uh, reading all the books he suggests and the movies and everything connects all to the Death Stranding, a.k.a. connects to life connections. The metaphor to me of Death Stranding is life connections. Um, and we'll get into that another time. But give me your theories, concepts, uh, breakdowns. What did I say that you disagree with? I'm sure there's a bunch of trolls set it off man let's go i'm happy with that i don't have a problem uh being corrected if like i said something wrong instead of calling that a tank i should have called it a container or something for the baby or those are not cords they're not umbilical cords they're cables you know whatever little thing you want to try to spit at me go for it man uh we're just here to have fun to play around with this trailer and enjoy the rich rich gaming experiences that we get and uh, I'm, I'm blessed to do that Kojima has been my inspiration the only reason I'm in the industry um, is because of Kojima and two years in the making and I'm so humbled to enjoy it and share it with you guys so that's why I still mess around with these theories but I did retire and I'm grateful to just be kicking it with you guys <laughs> and having some fun I know that people take my video and they make their own concepts and stuff and I'm okay with that and I'm, I've already gotten over that stage I was a little upset back in the day like 10 years ago 8 years ago but now it's like you know what everybody's doing it and there'll be like millions of views for the other copycats but still in all we know you know who was the originator in 2001 2002 all those days when I would create the craziness of Metal Gear theories. So I'm just blessed to be able to still do it for fun here and there, but not really. Um, I might do one in the near future because I just feel there's a lot to say about this game. And I feel like people have been getting it sideways, you know. There's important parts of what I've been saying here without getting into theories. Um, life connections is the real title <laughs> instead of death strandings um is deep the game should be a lot of fun and we'll see what happens uh, thank you guys for tuning in we will be back for more as we go forward i appreciate y'all man it is a good time just doing this um go ahead and show me love and let me know what the deal is as uh, we'll go ahead and chat about this online on discord and all the different areas that everybody contacts me I'm happy to just get into it tweet me all right peace one love enjoy Death Stranding Mad Gamer I'm out